Lena just won uh, another uh, prize, received another prize in India today, the Lali Award for Gender Sensibility. Sensitivity. Yeah. <laughs> Sensitivity. <laughs> Sensibility. It's, it's about the, uh, the, the same. Uh, but uh, you're also a, s a script writer of this uh, beautiful film. Could you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to, to this story and how, how uh, you developed uh, the script? Uh, this film actually started in a conversation with the actress Tanishta Chatterjee, who plays the widow Rani in the film. Um, we were finding something to do together and uh, she spoke about some conversations that she had with women uh, in a village when she was shooting another film. And I found that the conversation, especially about sex, was so much more honest than we would have in the cities and we think we're more progressive. So uh, for me, it was a lot about judgment and how everybody wants to believe the problems are happening there. Uh, so actually it started off with me wanting to make sex in the village and blow the pants of sex in the city. <laughs> but uh, once I started researching and I started traveling and I traveled for two months, had lots and lots of conversations um, in the villages with lots of women, came back to Bombay, started writing the script and first lesson I realized I'm not writing their story, I'm writing my story too. And uh, then sending my script out to friends across the world, filmmakers, who wrote back more stories. So for the first time I didn't get script notes, I got back more stories. So I realized that, you know, something that this film is addressing has such a universal resonance. So that in concise is the journey of the film and how we made it. But uh, the film was supposed to take place in uh, Gujarat, but, but yes. it ended up in uh, Rajasthan. Uh, yes. why, why was that? So we were supposed to shoot in Gujarat just because the landscape uh, that I was looking for in the Kutch area uh, was something which was very visually beautiful. So in fact, we kind of... This is a desert area. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, we created a dialect for the film which doesn't exist. We mixed Hindi and Kachi and made a special dialect which the people are speaking in the film, which some of the characters are speaking and the gypsies are speaking other languages. But uh, when I started looking for a village, I was refused permission from close to 30 villages in Gujarat because whenever I went there to see the village, the people, the men would say, do you mean more women like you are going to come here for the shoot? I would say, yes. They said, no, we don't want that. Our women will get corrupt looking at you. So finally, overnight, just before the shoot, we had to shift to Rajasthan. But luckily, Rajasthan uh, gave me the similar landscape. And uh, so finally, we shot in a village which was deserted. We had to construct 60% of the village. And uh, we had our own set of problems there too. <laughs> Uh, did you did you have any problems with the the censorship in India with this film? No, uh, actually, the film premiered at Toronto in two thousand fifteen, and I think I've been to at least twenty countries after that. And literally, the first question that I was ever asked in any festival across the world was, "Will India get to see the film that we saw?" <laughs> so uh, it was a big challenge, and at one point, I. I didn't know whether the film will release in India because I would not have allowed a censored version to release. But I guess we were very lucky and we got a great committee. Uh, the film finally released with the nudity being blurred, but there were no cuts in the film. And uh, we had other problems. We had sex scenes which were leaked out before the release and the whole film was online before the release. But uh, as far as the censor is concerned, that was the only thing. Uh, the f the film is shot in very beautiful uh, orange uh, red uh, colors, very warm and bright, and in, in a way it's it's um, uh, strange because the f the film is uh, it's a dark film at least some places and uh, almost a horror film. Why why did you choose to f uh, use these? Um, Actually, warm I was colors? celebrating these women. I mean, whether it's in the script or in the visual, for me it's a celebration of the spirit of these women whose stories I'm telling. So I always knew it's going to be a very, very beautiful film because I think these women are beautiful and I want to celebrate the spirit of survival and the sense of humor and the way they negotiate and navigate through life. 
Um, the film has been shot by an extremely, extremely great cinematographer, the same person who shot the Titanic, Russell Carpenter. He's the one who shot Parched. And he also came on board because he just uh, loved the script and the content. So initially when he uh, read my script and he offered to shoot it, we said, we can't afford you. And he says, no, I'm going to afford you. So that's a big blessing. And, and you also work with a, uh, a very, uh, an excellent uh, editor who yes. worked with Alexander Payne. Yes. Uh, how did you get him so on board? So Kevin Tent is one of the most respected editors in Hollywood. I just thought that since this film was being able to speak to international audience, we should get as many people uh, internationally to come and work on it because sometimes it's just a slight shift in the grammar which enlarges the communication. So uh, Kevin is extremely picky about the work that he does. So I had done the first cut, which was a three hour long cut, which is what Kevin saw. And he absolutely loved it. And I think my uh, collaboration with Kevin has redefined me as a scriptwriter too. It was so amazing working with him. So uh, I think culturally each person brought their own experiences and their own things into the story, which actually in a strange way kind of enlarges the landscape of the film. Uh, how are we to, to understand the ending? Is this like a women's dream or? Uh, it's the it, reality. <laughs> it's the reality, okay. Yes. Yeah. It's nice. If you don't respect us, we'll bond together and help each other out. <laughs> mm. Nice. Yeah, uh, questions from the audience? Yeah, question is how close is, is it to real villages in, in uh, Rajasthan? Yeah, the stories are, are the, are that the I got... characters in... based on, on, uh, on the characters, you, yes. uh, people you met during your research? Yes, so uh, this film is still rooted where it was. The international stories that came in only helped me understand that this has a resonance. The stories didn't become those stories. Uh, I think if, if a film is rooted and true to what it is, it will find, because ultimately film is a language of emotions. So if it's true to what it's saying, it will find, you know, an audience worldwide. Um, the film is based on very true stories, not necessarily the end, um, but the characters are based on... So Rani is based on a woman who was widowed at 15, and that was one of the key points in my research where I met her and we were spending a day together. And at one point she touched, you know, she held my hand and said, I haven't been touched in 17 years. And I couldn't even process what that meant. Um, so for me, touch is a very big theme, which is has to be addressed in the modern day. We are forgetting to touch each other. We're getting so isolated because I think touch is a vitamin much stronger than any pill. Um, so, yes, she's based on a true character. Lajo is based on a true character. Um, I met this woman and we were spending the day together again. And we were all sitting and laughing and I noticed that she had these really ugly bruises on her face. And at some point in the day I went and asked her, I said, does your husband beat you up? And she just looked at me and she says, oh, we're having so much fun right now, you know. Those are normal things, let's not talk about that. And that's when I knew my film had to be an uplifting film, not, you know, I'm not telling a story of depressed women. I'm telling a story of women who survive. There we have the ending. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, to be honest, I mean, I haven't faced any of these circumstances, but I've seen them all around me. And uh, for me, this film was never a men versus women film because when I really look at it, I think men are equally victims. And as a society, we need to realize that and recognize that we are spending so much time trying to heal the women. But I think men need that healing too. Because for me, Gulab and Manoj are really victims. I feel really sad. I mean, when I was writing the script also, I really felt really sad for them. Because if it's difficult being a woman in that society, it's as difficult being a man in that society. You know? So... Um, so that was one and unfortunately I haven't traveled to Africa and Brazil with the film but it's amazing the kind of chord it struck across the world in places that for me were heartbreaking actually in places like America, Canada where uh, 
according to me it's much more progressive but uh, so in america in a lot of the festivals the conversations did start with judgment that oh it's such a timely film with all the rapes happening in india and oh my god this child is still uh, is still practiced in india and i would say yeah in, just like teenage pregnancies happen in the us how is it different and then suddenly a dam would burst open like in toronto i had 40 women line up just wanting to come and tell me and they were from all countries just coming and telling me all kinds of truths about themselves and it was really heartbreaking for me and similarly in sweden i had women come up to me and say i know we are from the most gender equal country in the world but exactly the same stories happen here so that is the well as a filmmaker it may be heartening but actually it's most disheartening reality a lot of things actually what drew me into this story so when i started making films in india my first two films were with very big stars and all the time i was asked as a woman how do you feel as a director how as how do, and i felt that they're putting me in a box so the first thing that i swore is i will never make a film about women because that's what they want me to do but i think something very instinctively drew me to this film um one is because i don't see women like me have real conversations on screen you know and uh, that's really bothering i mean most of the films that i see in india i can't relate to the women i don't know where they come from and what this you know what is they make up secondly i don't see uh, women bonding in films generally women are pitted against each other which is another big part of our conditioning so and as far as i am concerned i think i've had some of the most nurturing and enriching experience uh, relationships with women who have shaped me into who i am today so i would like to see those relationships on screen so there was a combination of things uh, and then just a lot of truths that need to be spoken about unapologetically so those were the reasons that drew me to this film i would like to ask on the previous films you have worked with the uh, big um, indian stars like uh, amitabh bachchan and also been kent kentley why why uh, didn't you, you and uh, parts why did you choose to well i came yeah. <laughs> a lot of people in india ask me that we make these films so that we can get to work with stars you made films with stars why do you want to make these films but i think uh, i have never charted out my career and uh, for me past was the most satisfying film that i've ever made uh when you work with very big stars it comes with uh i mean you have to discount a lot of things sometimes you have to consider the audience and in india the uh stars have images which are bigger than themselves they can't become characters so somewhere that's very limiting but that's a different kind of filmmaking it and it has its own strengths it's just not meant for me yeah Uh, this film being received in india was the question and who do you think is your audience in india well uh, it's surprising but uh, not surprising actually uh, the film was very well received critically in india um, but like i told you it had leaked out online before the release in fact a week before almost the distributors didn't release the film because it had leaked but considering my first two films with, with such big stars i don't think those films were seen as much as parched i mean recently i was uh, on a recce i mean so many people here in the audience have told me they've seen it on youtube so i think it's my most watched film <laughs> not just in india i think worldwide the curse and the the blessing of the internet <laughs> yeah what not really i mean i expected it to be but uh, i don't know whether it was the fact that we had got reviewed across the world and then it came to india i had some amazing reviews especially by male critics in fact the three bad reviews i got were from women okay. <laughs> yes it was released in the us and france before yes, yes. before it was premiered the in, film in has, india uh, is what the longest running indian film ever in france and it was ranked the ninth best film of last year in france it's run for 9 months in theaters 
It started in 70 theatres, went on to 205 theatres and ran for nine months. So it's a huge hit in France. I think we have uh, time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, just because he comes from Rajasthan, the thing is I uh, mixed, I you know how it is in India that if you make a film about a certain tribe or a certain surname, that particular community will stand up and say, we don't do this and you know the whole discussion becomes about that. So uh, I had mixed from costumes to language to tradition of at least five, six communities. But still, by the time the film was releasing, we had death threats from one community whose costume the widow wore. And they said, we're going to come and get you and shoot you down. <laughs> and I kept asking them, they were these ranting men on the phone. I said, okay, even if it's about you, what's the problem? They would never tell me what the problem was. <laughs> they just told me that they'll shoot me down for it. <laughs> okay, Nina, thank you very much for thank your you. uh, wonderful film. Come back with your next film. And uh, now you're all invited for uh, Indian refreshments. Uh, generously provided by the Indian Embassy in the uh, bar downstairs. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for coming.